One of the most common ways that people get infected with malware happens when they visit, let's say, a particular website that exploits a technical vulnerability either directly against their web browser or against a plugin that might be running on their web browser. And this typically happens via what's known as a web attack toolkit or a web exploit kit. Now, one of the most common and widely mentioned exploit kits is a kit known as, as Black Hole. Black Hole, which actually was developed by somebody who goes by the online handle of Paunch. Okay. And um, some other exploit kits that uh, you might have heard of include, let's say, the, the Cool Exploit Kit. Actually, Cool Exploit Kit uh, was also uh, developed by Paunch. It's maybe more of a higher end or a more expensive version of the, the Black Hole Toolkit. It also includes a number of otherwise unpublished exploits. Uh, there's also a toolkit known as Phoenix. Uh, there's Nuclear, Sweet Orange, Double Semi, I think Red Kit, uh, Siberia, and there's a whole bunch of other kits out there. Some of the older ones included things like MPAC, IcePack, FirePack, Zero uh, X88, and so on and so forth. Now, what I wanted to do in this video is not go into all these kits in detail, but to start off by explaining what these attack toolkits are at a high level. And then in the next video, I'll talk about these kits at a more technical level, maybe give a bit of more, a bit more of a technical description. But really, my, my goal, even in that technical description, will be to give a bit of a catch-all, if you will, because um, what I've noticed is that these kits are constantly changing at a low level. So if I try to cover every subtle detail, every nuance, there's a good chance that the description will quickly become stale and outdated when the next version of a kit, like, let's say, Black Hole, is made available, or even for that matter, if an attacker comes up with a brand new exploit kit that becomes especially popular. So in general, these videos, my goal is going to be to describe these toolkits at a general level that'll apply across different toolkit variations. All right. And just in general, there's going to be a lot of details to fill in, a lot of important pieces when talking about these toolkits. So I'm probably going to have to fill in a lot of details along the way just to even keep the description uh, tenable. So let, let's uh, get started here. You know, what is a web exploit toolkit. What's an actual web exploit toolkit? Well, at a high level, it's basically, you can think of it as more or less a ready-made, a ready-made, you know, turnkey solution. Uh, it's a product offering that can allow really anyone uh, to become a cyber criminal. A cyber criminal can basically purchase one of these kits and deploy that kit to carry out attacks using the web essentially as a conduit through which to actually compromise systems. So you can think of it as turnkey and really it allows anyone with even a modicum, even a small degree of technical ability to really engage in the process of conducting cyber crime. Now, web exploit or web attack toolkits are used to install malicious software onto the systems of victims. And such they do this by, and I'm gonna kind of elaborate here, they're gonna they basically do this by exploiting, by exploiting a technical vulnerability on a system. And I'm gonna talk about these terms uh, let me get vulnerability spelled right. By basically exploiting a technical vulnerability on the system. And a vulnerability is basically a weakness in an application that can be taken advantage of. And in our case, we're typically going to be talking about web vulnerabilities or applications that are associated with browsing the web. Now, the terms exploit and vulnerability come up very often in cybersecurity. So maybe it's worth it for me to uh, take a bit of a step back and uh, perhaps describe uh, what these terms really entail and what they mean. Uh, so, you know, in general, a vulnerability is, as I described earlier, it's a technical weakness that you can take advantage of from a security perspective. And the term exploit represents code or a piece of software that can then be used to take advantage of that vulnerability or to exploit that vulnerability or technical weakness. So one thing that's a bit confusing is that among people in the security community, when they use the term exploit, they use it actually as a noun to represent the actual code that's used to take advantage of that vulnerability versus using it as a verb, which is how you would uh, typically use the word exploit in English. So having said all that, what kinds of applications can typical exploit kits take advantage of? And, and for web exploit kits, uh, to start with, there's... Uh, the most common application that these kits can take advantage of is the the web browser. Okay, that's the most uh, the most frequent contender in this case. Actually, I shouldn't say the most frequent contender, but it's, it's the one that most naturally comes to mind. Um, 
And browsers have had numerous vulnerabilities over the years. Uh, but aside from browsers, which is the, the most natural aspect, um, there are other applications that you might also use when browsing the web. And these applications have in turn been exploited in the past as well. Uh, some of these might include, but perhaps not be limited to, uh, applications for viewing uh, flash animations or PDF viewers or uh, plugins for Java so you can you can look at Java content and so for example when you look at a web page let's say there's a web page here you might actually even as part of this web page there may be a flash movie somewhere there may be a Java applet you know and maybe a link to a PDF file and so on and so forth and so to actually view this web page in your browser, you will typically leverage a number of ancillary applications that are part of your browser environment that are typically known as, as plugins. Plugins, and the plugins are basically these, these add-ons or extensions to your browser that allow you to view and that will basically render this additional content. And so uh, it, the plugin essentially implements capabilities for viewing different content types. So from the user perspective, though, I want to point out that you know, they're just using a web browser. Um, they don't. They may or may not know the difference between all of these plugins, but underneath the hood, in addition to this web browser, one or more of these plugins may be running. And if they are running, then they can potentially become exploited. Now, I do want to mention also that the actual creator of the kit, the person who um, developed the original kit itself, may be different from the person who actually uh, deploys the kit. So there may be a different person who's actually the, the kit's the kit's user, okay? And the kit's user will in turn be different from the person who is an actual victim. So the kit's user is basically trying to ensnare victims into um, getting exploited through the use of the toolkit. So for example, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Black Hole was itself developed by a guy named Paunch, okay? Uh, Ponch, in turn, what he will typically do is he will take his black hole toolkit, which is going to be ready-made and packaged, and then he's going to basically sell it uh, to some cyber criminal who's going to pay him um, some money uh, for that kit. And uh, maybe I should mention here that uh, a little bit about black hole because it might help make things a bit more concrete. Uh, typically, uh, black hole and, and many other toolkits uh, in the web exploit market are, are sold as subscription services. So you get uh, the kit and you really are paying for a license uh, much like you would with software to use that kit for a certain period of time so for example I think black hole um, at one point cost about uh, $700 to use for three months okay and I think uh, also but I think it was a thousand dollars if you wanted to use it for for six months so there's a bit of a, a discount uh, and I think if you were interested in using it for a year for a full year uh, then you would pay about $1,500, all right? And these are the prices, actually, if you host Black Hole on your own server. So if the kit's user actually hosts Black Hole or any exploit kit on its own server, this is what it would cost him. Um, if, for example, they decided that they don't have a server or they need access to a server, uh, for an additional fee, uh, Ponch or one of these other exploit kit writers can provide you with a server on which to actually host the exploit kit, all right? Now, you may also be asking yourself, why, why is it a subscription service? This is a pretty natural question. Well, first of all, um, there are a couple of reasons why you might, uh, why it makes sense to have this be a subscription service from the perspective of, of the authors. So, for example, as part of the subscription, you might get access to, to new exploits. So, if a new exploit comes out for a vulnerability, then uh, if you pay for a subscription, you may be given access to that new exploit as part of your subscription offering. Also, and this is something that's maybe somewhat surprising, uh, if you buy one of these toolkits, you will typically be given some degree of, of customer support. After all, you are a customer of the toolkit, and uh, if you are a cyber criminal, and so uh, in some cases, Ponch himself will give you support regarding how to use Black Hole. There actually are multiple tiers of support. In fact, um, some toolkit authors are, are fairly brazen. They actually put a phone number that you can call for customer service. Some of them actually provide and I want to point this out, live customer support. It's not just something that's uh, you know, pretty low-key. They are trying to do a good job for their customers. And live customer support is typically done via instant messaging applications, um, things like services like Jabber or even ICQ, uh, for example. Okay. And I also want to point out here that, that um, a couple of other aspects of the supply chain really quickly. So the reality is that 
the, the kit's user will then in turn essentially compromise victims and make money off of them. Okay, and then I also want to mention one last thing, which is that the creator of the kit, you know, they may in turn, uh, they may have just kind of packaged everything together. They may actually need to buy exploits uh, via the exploit market. So they may actually be paying for exploits via the exploit market, packaging those exploits up into the toolkit, selling the toolkit to a user who then actually uses the toolkit to ensnare some particular victim. So this is a bit of a complex uh, supply chain. As you can see, it's, it's very much a business for these guys. Uh, it's a, in fact, it's, it's quite big business. It's not just a, a small amount of money here. Uh, this is big business for its authors, and ultimately they want to have satisfied customers. And so you'll see a lot of what they've built uh, really is designed around optimizing their quote-unquote customer experience. So I think this is a natural stopping point for this video. In the next video, I'll talk some more about the underlying technical details of how these web exploit toolkits actually work.